We're hungry to see our own language on stage. We're actually doing something really important for the sector. There's no knowing what the future might be. It's fantastic. A lot of deaf people have an opportunity to uh, get involved in theatre. The work that we're doing with Solar Bear is vital. Not being able to rely on spoken language um, was a real opportunity for me to explore physical language much more. No, it's interesting when you work with sign language. Because there's not a lot of opportunities, so it's been really good. I make bath the for everybody. It's about access. Glorious access. I'm Maggie Kinloch, I'm the Vice Principal here at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. The work that we're doing with Solar Bear is vital to not only us as a conservatoire, but to the theatre and performance professions in Scotland. It's really vital because there is no such training available in Scotland, and in fact, there's no such full-time degree programme available anywhere else in the UK. And yet there is all this talent out there in the deaf community, and there is no doubt that the performance industry will benefit from the enrichment of the talent pool that our graduates will bring to it. My name is Jerry Ramage and I am Artistic Director of Solar Bear. Solar Bear have been working with young deaf people for the past six years. And throughout that time we have seen enormous potential uh, and an immense amount of talent coming from the young people that we've been working with. It's therefore been really frustrating for us and for them uh, to not have any opportunity to take that uh, on to the next stage. Uh, that lack of access to professional training for deaf people is simply there because they're deaf and that seems like a, a, a huge barrier and a, a really unjust, unfair position to be in. My name is Jenny. Jenny, and I'm the Artistic Director of Grey Eye Theatre, which is UK's leading deaf and disabled theatre company. The work that Solar Bear has been doing with the uh, Conservatoire here is just, it's fantastic, it's necessary. There's so few opportunities for deaf people to train and learn about becoming actors. So it's, it's fundamental. It, I cannot even state how important I think it is. In terms of why are we focusing on deaf theatre in this way, well, it's very simple. There is no training that is accessible to deaf performers. And we want to play our part in ensuring that the talent pool in the UK and beyond, in fact, in, in, in the whole English-speaking world, if you like, is enriched. Uh, by the inclusion of trained performers who are deaf, who will bring not only um, their talent into that uh, field of performance, but also a new performance aesthetic, in a sense, as well. And it really will inform how theatre evolves over the course of the next decade or so. My name is Keenan Stewart, and I am a, a Solar Bear Theatre Apprentice Petitioner. Uh, the work that they've been doing so far has been really, really good. You know, it's given a lot of deaf people opportunity to... Uh, get involved in theatre and um, encouraging them to join theatre as well. It's been fantastic. Um, uh, I'm EJ DTS is in connection with RCS, so I think that, that means the RCS are giving a lot of older deaf people the chance to train, which is a great honour. I'm pleased with that. When you see sign language on stage, when it's integrated and it's owned by deaf performers and shared with hearing performers, it's just, oh, you know, you just feel so excited that you feel represented. And I think that's what's so important. Also, the whole experience of working with deaf actors and interpreters in theatre, when you unpack how you translate from English into BSL, that in itself is so deeply theatrical because you have to find the truth. Up until six years ago, I had never worked with deaf actors or deaf young people. Uh, I had never actually met anyone who was deaf. I wasn't aware of the opportunities 
it would give to me as a director to start thinking about the theatre making process in a much more visual way. Uh, not, having, not being able to rely on spoken language um, was a real opportunity for me to explore physical language much more, visual language, I guess we call it. And that opened up all sorts of doors to me as a director. Um, never once, I don't think, did I look on that process as being challenging. If anything, it really excited me about what I could do as a director and how I could encourage the young people I was working with to think in a, in, in a theatrical way. So it was a very exciting journey and continues to be so. I think the, the main challenge of developing this area of work is about how outside see it and how they embrace it rather than be, oh, it's not for us, but it's going to be the biggest one. We can train, we will, we will develop some most amazing staff actually through this course. It will happen because the standard here is really high and the expectation is the same for the deaf performers. They've got to be better than better, really, I think, to prove themselves, but it will be finding work outside. So hopefully I'm aware that some of them, they will set up their own deaf theatre company, good. But we need to be careful also that it doesn't become ghettoised. We need to be everywhere. We need lots of deaf theatre companies and lots of deaf actors in the mainstream world. We need a lot, really. Of course, there are a number of challenges in developing this work. Um, probably the two obvious ones, the two most obvious ones at the beginning, are first of all, finance. It is expensive. It's more expensive than standard training. For example, we need to do things like what I'm doing at this very moment. We need to make filmed pieces of work so that communication is possible. We need to employ, employ British Sign Language interpreters to work on camera, but also to work in the live context. These are expensive things to do, so that, that's the first challenge. I think the second challenge is... Um, attitude, if you like. In other words, uh, people in institutions like ours, teachers, uh, other students, are not yet uh, developed in their own understanding of the, a, the great strength of bringing deaf performers into the, the training, but also uh, the challenges attached to that. So we've been spending the last three years with Solar Bear in preparing our institution, teaching a lot of staff British Sign Language, developing interpreters for performance, working closely with Solar Bear and a number of deaf students on our pilot programmes, so as to develop um, a community here in the institution where the attitudes have adjusted and where there is inclusion and where we all understand that actually this is just part of daily life and part of what we should be doing and what we wish to do as a conservatoire. Undoubtedly there are lots of challenges along the way, um, uh, not least in how within the conservatoire here um, uh, deaf students will communicate. Uh, and these things that we're trying to address at, at this stage of the partnership so that when we get to the stage of having deaf students here on a full-time basis, hopefully we'll have addressed all of the challenges. So communication is, is one clearly. We're trying to address that by offering deaf awareness training for the staff, British Sign Language training, even very basic British Sign Language training. And hopefully as time progresses, we'll be able to begin to offer that uh, to students as well. Uh, but undoubtedly, it's a challenge, but it's not a barrier. It, it, it's not something that should, should stop this work from happening. I started in April 2013 uh, as a, the apprentice and um, I've been working, you know, I've been travelling around the UK, um, working with uh, several theatre companies and observing what they do, observing the rehearsal process for a production um, and um, having a look if it's um, accessible for deaf people or not. A challenge, another challenge, I guess, is how we teach the course, how we teach the students, how we communicate the, with them. Do we do that through British Sign Language? Do we do it through spoken language? Or do we use a combination of both? But undoubtedly that will be something that uh, tutors that students will work with in the future will have to find their own way around. But hopefully with the preparation work we're doing for that, uh, I, I, I think that that challenge will become more of an opportunity really than anything else. These, I guess, are the main challenges. And as we go on, we will, we will find more. 
but if we can look at them as real opportunities to extend the work that we're doing and offering the students opportunities to create something that is new and unique and visually exciting, I think these challenges are well worth facing. Well, I've joined Deaf Theatre Skills um, last year. Um, we did a 10-week pilot, so it was kind of like experimenting, see if it works or not. And then it went on to a, a year course, which is fun at FU Tuesday. The teaching standards is really, really, really high. You, you kind of leave DTS thinking, you know, more about how would I do this as a performer? How, how would I approach this? And it can be quite hard because the standards are so high, but uh, I feel like I've achieved that standard after being at DTS and my confidence uh, for, as myself as a performer has uh, gone way up. When I first started DTS it was just a 10 week pilot project and I was interested to see how it would go. I felt as if there were good opportunities given to us and I really enjoyed it but it was extended out to a yearly um, of course, it was great and I really enjoyed it more because it was a great experience for me to, to work with other deaf people. I worked with hearing people before in mainstream environments and blind people with other disabilities, etc. But it was really nice to work in an environment where there were other deaf people here. I think that it was um, a great challenge. There were so many things involved um, and I felt it was a very interesting experience. We had other days as well that have just been fantastic. There's no doubt in my mind at all that there will be enormous benefits from this work. First of all, all of our students and staff here will benefit from including deaf performers in the work that we do just day in, day out. We will all be um, better people, we will be informed, we will all understand in a way that we've never understood before. So for the institution, there are enormous benefits. For the profession, the benefits are, well, I think infinite, because once we have a critical mass of deaf performers who have been trained and who are working there in the profession, there's no way of knowing quite how the profession will then evolve and how the languages of performance will then evolve. The development of this course is potentially one of the biggest changes in the industry in Scotland in recent years. Ultimately, it addresses really important questions of equality. Um, it addresses really important issues around access uh, and integration. But I still come back to the notion that the most important thing about it is it brings something, a new development to the sector, which, if it embraces wholeheartedly, as the Conservatoire are doing and Solar Bear are doing, the opportunities of, for creating new theatre and a new style of performance, a new way of storytelling, is something that will have a, potentially a huge impact on theatre in years to come. I think the degree course is really important uh, because it gives deaf people the opportunity to get training and I think it is a really good opportunity for deaf people to kind of get into theatre with a degree that they could easily work anywhere. <laughs> I feel the RCS is very important for me. I want to be able to take part in drama courses. So far there's been a lot of barriers. And I want to be able to get a degree. I want to be able to prove that I can do it. So with RCS doing this and putting this forward for deaf people, I think a great opportunity to get a qualification and, and evidence these skills for the future. Um, which is why this, this setup here is just brilliant and I'm really, really hoping that it will be a model that can be rolled out you know, across the UK. We don't need just 10, 10 deaf acts, we need hundreds of them. Why not? The of storytelling is something that will have a, potentially a huge impact on theatre in the years to come. This, this is a huge opportunity to change the climate.
and it really will inform how theatre evolves over the course of the next decade or so.